Captain Arius Vitaro of the 115th Company, Raven Guard, reflected on the series of circumstances that led to the situation he was in now, him pointing the barrel of his Archaeotech pistol at the head of the Iron Hands legionary before him, finger on the trigger. He thought, and supposed, and knew, in his heart that everything traced back to Istvan, to the drop site massacre, and that was where it all went wrong for all of them. But worse for the Iron Hands than his own legion, for the Iron Hands had lost their Primarch there. He, everyone heard it over the Vox, and everyone felt it when Ferris Manus was killed. He watched the Iron Hands, normally known for their stoic clarity, go into berserk fury upon the death of their Primarch, charging into the traitors without any mercy or hesitation. He remembered the panic calls of the Iron Hands and Salamanders, and his own legion over the box, as they all sought to abandon and flee from the drop site as fast as they could, people taking to gunships and flying off to ships even as the gunships were being ripped apart around them, cruisers and escorts being destroyed in the void by the traitor fleet. He remembered his own flight, 39 marines crammed into a Thunderhawk that could only accommodate 30, as they managed to get aboard a Salamander strike cruiser, alongside a handful of Salamanders and a squad of Iron Hands. He ma he re <clears throat> Vitaro remembered the desperate burning of the engines to get to the Mandible Point, the, <clears throat> the Death Guard cruisers on their trail, and managing just as <clears throat> and managing just narrowly to escape into the void. From there, the their shattered force had done the best it could to fight back against the traitors, attacking small convoys, Imperial Army units, doing whatever damage they could against the War Master's forces. But 39 Raven Guard, 8 Salamanders and 6 Iron Hands was no force that could take on the might of the traitor legions before them. But they did the best they could with what they had. As for the survivors of the drop site, those that escaped the drop site, those of the Iron Hands, had become more mercurial, more dour, more dark, more somber. They did not reflect the proud warriors of old. They became bitter and spiteful. It reminded Vitara of the Iron Warriors in a way with their bitterness and spite, something he'd never thought to see from the Iron Hands. Although, privately, Vitara never really cared for the Iron Hands, always thought them arrogant and entitled. Reflecting back to the situation at hand, and how he came to be holding his Archaeotech pistol upon a fellow legionary, well that started 23 hours ago. Their strike cruiser had translated into the system to attack a traitor Imperial Army supply convoy. It was an easy fight, mortals against legionaries, unarmored transports with a strike cruiser, it was a foregone conclusion. And standing upon the bridge, it did look like it would be easy pickings, until the shipmistress addressed the captain. Lord, it's about the supply convoy. It's gone. What do you mean, shipmistress? What do you mean the convoy is gone? My lord, the convoy is gone. It's disappeared from our oar specs. It appears to have been destroyed. Destroyed? What could have possibly... Bring up a long-range oar specs. Focus pulse. What in the name of the Primarch is happening out there? The shipmistress keyed some buttons on her console, and a whole lift image outlining the sector appeared on the main screen. Brother Numenik of the Salamanders, the acting leader of the Salamanders contingent, and technically the master of this vessel, although he had ceded command to Vitaro, sergeant to captain, came and stood beside him. Trouble, cousin? Perhaps. Shipmistress. What have destroyed that convoy? Scanning, my lord. She scanned and looked again. My lord, it appears that there is another vessel moving in between the wreckage of the convoy. Ship ident and allegiance? My lord, it, it's identified as a destroyer named the War Spike, flying the colors of the 13th Legion. The 13th Legion, said Vitaro. Well, that is good news. It has been many years since we have seen contact with any other loyalists. If they are loyalists, said Numenak. I cannot imagine the warriors of Gilliman siding with the Warmaster. Can you, cousin? No, this is true, 
However, cousin, we did believe that the second wave at the drop site were on our side as well. Memories of the drop site started flooding back into Pataro's mind and he stamped down on them. Ship mistress, send a transmission over to that vessel. Long range hail. My lord, there's something else about that vessel. I performed a focused pulsed auspex scan and it revealed that the ident that it is displaying is not its original region ident. What is that ship then, shipmistress? Under further scans, the true ident of that ship is revealed to be named the Hound's Duty, a warship of the 12th Legion. The World Eaters, said Vitaro. Numenak spoke up. Perhaps they are trying to lure us in. Perhaps they are renegades or pirates. Vitaro nodded to himself. They had encountered a couple of bands of renegade marines before. He hated them almost as much as he hated the traitors. They were little more than pirates or scavengers, feeding on the ends of the war, refusing to commit to a side. Perhaps, said Vitaro, but why use ident codes of a vessel of the 13th? Open a long range vox hail to that vessel, shipmistress. Captain, if they are pirates, they will run. If they are loyalists, they will stay. Either way, we will get answers out of this. Push up a hollow lift. Bataro stood up, walked over to the hollow lift plate, and stood proudly, hand upon his paragon blade at his hip. This is Captain Arius Vitaro of the 115th Company, 19th Legion, addressing the 13th Legion vessel War Spite. Respond. A crackle and a pop, and then an opposing hololeth image appeared, proudly displaying a warrior of the 13th Legion, his blue battle plate and ultima clear upon his shoulder guard. Hail and greetings, Captain. I am Brother Trefor of the 22nd Company, 13th Legion. It has been many years since we have seen fellow loyalists. Vitaro spoke up. Did you destroy this convoy, Trefor? Yes, Captain. We had been tracking this convoy over two sectors, and we engaged it now it was close to the asteroid field. After escaping the Maelstorm on Kelf, we've been doing our best to fight the traitors as best we could, while we seek to be reunited with our Primarch and try and get back to Ultramar if we can. Vitaro paused for a moment and then spoke up. Cousin, we did a full auspex scan upon your vessel, and <laughs> Trefor laughed. <laughs> Yes, about that, it's not actually mine. We borrowed it. Consider it a spoil of war for the war effort. Vitaro laughed. I just had to ask, cousin. It seems a little suspicious a warrior of the Ultramarines moving around in a 12th Legion vessel. It is a 12th Legion vessel no longer. This vessel proudly belongs to the Emperor and in his name this vessel shall serve the Imperium once again. Very good, cousin. Now, may I recommend that you send a delegation over to our vessel so we can discuss in person. We can trade whatever supplies we can spare, and we can share intelligence over traitor activities in the nearby sectors. I agree, Captain. That sounds like a good idea. I shall prepare all of my marines and we shall head over in a Thunderhawk. It had taken several more hours before the two vessels came within sight of each other. It was an ugly looking vessel, typical of anything of the 12th Legion. It had been badly damaged and mauled as if it had seen heavy combat. A single Thunderhawk gunship flew from the flanks of the 12th Legion vessel and flew to the main hangar deck of the Salamander Strike Cruiser. But all of the Legionaries from the vessel stood upon the hangar deck awaiting the new arrivals. Vataro and his 36 surviving Raven Guard, seven Salamanders, and the five Iron Hands, led by an Iron Hands legionary named Atreus. The Thunderhawk came to a halt in the ramp, powered down its thrusters, and slowly the ramp descended down. Two figures stepped forth and emerged down the gangway ramp. The first was easily identifiable as Brother Trefor of the 13th Legion proud in his suit of Mark II armor. The second was a warrior of the Imperial Fists in bulky Mark III plate. Boarding shield 
and a chainsaw in hand. The catalyst that set everything off was what happened when the remaining warriors inside the Thunderhawk stepped down into the landing bay. Five Astartes stepped forth from the ramp onto the landing pad. The first was a hulking warrior in Mark III power armor, easily identifiable as a tech marine. A servo harness on his back, although instead of traditional power axe, he clutched a massive two-handed chain axe in his fists. His heraldry easily identifiable as that of the World Eaters. The second was a warrior with a gleaming power spear, standing proudly in his suit of Mark IV power armor, purple and gold of the Emperor's children. The third was easily identifiable as a warrior of the Night Lords. Midnight blue he stood, twin lightning claws in hand. The fourth was a warrior of the Death Guard, an apothecary carrying an Arthesium and a bolt pistol. And the final member, armed in unassuming standard Mark IV plate and clutching a bolter, was a member of the Alpha Legion. All of their original colour schemes remained the same, however, an identifiable trait between them all was that the symbols of their legion upon their shoulder guards had been obliterated, their shoulder guards painted black, with crude imperial eagles painted upon their shoulder guards in red. Atreus and his iron hands immediately raised their weapons towards the newcomers. Traitor filth! spoke the iron hand. Vitaro stepped between him and the imperial fist who the iron hand was raising his bolter against. Cease, cousin! What is the meaning of this, ultramarine? These are our... Yeah. These are our honored battle brothers. They have fought alongside us for many years. All of them are loyal. They have turned their backs on their legions. And they stand united with the Emperor. I can vouch for their loyalty and their integrity. Every one of these warriors is a true servant of the Imperium. Lies, you harbor traitors, Ultramarine, spoke Atreus. Stand aside. If you stand aside and let us do your duty for you in gunning down this traitor filth, perhaps we will let you live. No, cousin, spoke Vitaro. These are loyalists. I trust the words of the Ultramarines and the Imperial Fists. If they say these warriors are loyal, then they are loyal. No, Raven Guard, you are too easy to trust. You are cowardly and weak. All traitors deserve death, and anyone who harbors them are traitors themselves. Stand aside, Raven Guard, and let me do my duty. Silence, Iron Hand. Has the death of your Primarch caused you to lose your mind as well? Here are fellow loyalists, warriors who stand beside us, and your first thoughts are of suspicion? You seek to gun them down without knowing their story? You seek to gun them down even though they have the warriors of the 13th and the 7th vouching for them? Stand aside, Raven Guard, or you will die. Calm, cousin. Stand down. This is not up for debate. Atreus raised his bolter and pointed at Vitaro instead. Stand aside, Raven Guard. Run. Run like your weakling Primarch. Although Vitaro was a member of the Xeric tribesmen and an original member of the Legion, and so did not get on well with his Primarch, only just being spared exile alongside many of his Legion brothers, Atreus dishonoring his Primarch in such a way raised Vitaro's anger, and he put his hand on the hilt of his blade. Speak no further words, Iron Hand. Do not test me. Atreus doubled down. Your Primarch is a weakling coward, and he deserved to die. I hope he did. It would be the least he deserved for his cowardice, abandoning us at the drop site. If he had stayed, then Ferris would have survived. If you had all stayed, we would have won. You are all cowards and weaklings and filth. Vitaro drew his sword with one hand and raised his Archaeotech pistol with the other. And that 
was how Vitaro came to be standing in this particular situation. Speak one more word, Iron Hand, and I will kill you. Atreus spoke no words, touching his finger to the trigger of his bolter, and then the storm happened. One of the Iron Hands with a plasma gun fired first. He hit the Night Lord in the chest, killing him instantly. Atreus fired a bolt round, hitting Vitaro in the gut, and Vitaro fired with his Archaeotech pistol. The Sunfire Beam obliterating the Iron Hand's head in a blast of radiant blight. The Iron Hands raised their weapons to fire, but Vitaro's Raven Guard didn't give them the moment to fire. 36 Raven Guard turned upon the three remaining Iron Hands and cut them down in less than a second. And with that, it was done. Or so Vitaro had fought. One of the Iron Hands, Vitaro did not remember his name, still lived, and he gurgled on his own blood near the back. Vitaro walked over towards the Iron Hand as the Iron Hand began to softly speak. You are a coward. Just like your Primark, you will die alone, dishonored, ashamed. Vitaro thumbed his Archaeotech pistol onto the maximum setting and fired at the dying Iron Hand. He turned the entire top half of the Iron Hand into nothing more than bubbling slag, the concentrated energy blast warping the deck of the landing pad around him. And with that, it was done. All of the Iron Hands lay dead upon the ground. The Salamander, Numenek, spoke up. Cousin, Captain, why did you do that? They had gone too far, Salamander. They had lost themselves to grief and despair. It was just no, <clears throat> it was no more than putting down a grief-stricken hound that had lost its master. I have no sympathy nor regrets for them. They chose despair and treachery. When faced with the truth in front of them, they chose denial. There is no place in this galaxy for warriors such as them. Nothing of value was lost. The salamander looked like he was about to fight back, his hand gripping upon the hilt of his chainsword. But the ultramarine stepped forth. The iron hands were always like that. I served alongside them during the fall of Gardenel, and what they did, well, their actions today have not surprised me, let's just say that. But what now? Vitaro looked up and fought. We need to return to Terra. Fighting behind the lines without clear leadership, that is no way for us to fight. It is clear now that being too far away from our brothers from what we were, is causing the fractures of our brotherhood to fray and wilt. We need to return to Terra and stand upon the walls. Only there will we find unity of purpose. Vitaro's words sounded good, but in reality they were hollow in his mind. Personally, although he would never admit it to anyone, Vitaro enjoyed killing the Iron Hands. He felt it was just and good. He swore never to serve alongside the Iron Hands again for this, partly because of the dishonor and shame they brought, and partly because he secretly feared to himself that if he were to see any other Iron Hands again, he would probably kill them, just for the fun of it. These were dark thoughts for Vitaro, and he reflected for a moment upon the decision by his Primarch to exile all of the old Legion command structure and wondered if perhaps his Primarch had been right to do so all along.